Um, we're live. What? I'm actually Curly World. Um, welcome to our product expectations Google Hangout, where we discuss when her product fail is my holy grail. Um, there's a balance between science and what happens on the molecular level and what happens with user expectation. And so it's always amazing when those two worlds collide. And we'll be discussing what makes our curls happy. So do not hesitate to chime in and ask questions. Um, we will be moderating those questions and responding to them. And we'll start by introducing ourselves. So my name is Amanda, and I have a low porosity 4A hair. And my go-to style is a wash and go. Right now I'm wearing a twist out. Christina? <laughs> Hi, I'm Christina. I have to see hair. It's high porosity because I bleached and colored it. So it used to be low, now it's high. And this is probably my go to style or just a top knot. Hi, I'm Devery. I'm 3C. Um, I color my hair a lot too. So I have medium to high porosity curls as well. And my go to. It just depends on how I'm feeling. I don't want to say a wash and go because I don't wear that every day, so it just depends. Hi, I'm Jamie. I have 3B curls. I think they've become curlier since working here at Naturally Curly. Um, I have low porosity hair. I've never colored it or um, done much to it. My go-to style is just a wash and go, and then I usually clip a little piece back like this to get it out of my face. Hey, I'm Nikki. I have 3C hair, and my go-to style is a wash and go, although it's in a bun right now because I'm not having a great hair day. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Evelyn. Um, I have four whatever hair you need me to have, um, <laughs> and I have high porosity hair since I bleached my hair like seven times, and my go-to style is a twist and curl, although that's not what this is right now, but that's my go-to style. So what is this right now? This is an unfortunate wash and go. <laughs> um, my 4B, 4C um, sisters, you know that wash and goes mean tangles. So I'm just, this is an accident. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, if you're on Google Plus, um, don't forget to hashtag naturally curly. And on the right side of your screen, you should be seeing um, our favorite products from Curl Mart scrolling as we um, go through our Google Hangouts. So let's start with questions, and we'll begin with the regimen basics. So, um, Christina and Devery, cleansers. Are y'all anti-sulfates? Be, be honest with us. Um, are you looking for a lather? Do you prefer no lather? Um, do you expect to clarify with your shampoo? Like, what do you expect? What is your ideal shampoo? Well, um, for me, I'm not... I don't get so hung up on sulfates or no sulfates. At the end of the day, um, it just matters if if I feel like it's cleaning my scalp, and that's all that matters. And I like to look at the water whenever I'm washing my hair, and if I see that it's dirty, I actually kind of like that because <laughs> I know that it's doing its job. So um, lather, I don't really care for lather, but at the end of the day, I don't care about sulfates. And I used to not care about sulfates at all. It wasn't something that I was looking for on my ingredients labels until I bleached my hair and then dyed it back to dark, which it is now. And so now that it has been bleached and then dyed, my hair will be, or the color will be stripped if I use sulfates. So now I try to avoid them now that I'm color processed. So would you say that you could tell the difference between using a product that's sulfate free and using a product that isn't? Or do you just measure how well the product's performing by the overall experience? For me, it's the overall experience. And it's also, it can be hard to tell because I'm changing up my products all the time. So um, it's a lot of trial and error combinations of like shampoo and conditioner. Um, so for me, it's not so much the ingredients that helps, but a lot of the time it's just um, trying it out and then seeing how my hair looks the next day and then trying that combination a few more times, and that's really how I decide. Yeah, same here. Like I said, I don't 
get hung up on what I see on the back of the label. Um, sulfates, I just so happen to, you know, if I run into a sulfate-free cleanser and I feel like it works, then great. Right now I'm using one, um, and I love it, but it's not because it was sulfate-free. So. Okay, so now we're going to move on to conditioners, and we're going to um, address this question to Evelyn and Jamie. Um, <laughs> when it comes to conditioners, what do you look for? Is slip important? Um, a lot of naturals, women with curly hair, textured hair, tend to detangle with conditioners or before uh, the whole entire washing process. So um, explain what you look for in conditioners. We can start with Evelyn. Um, I look for slip. If your conditioner doesn't have slip, there's no reason it should be on the shelf. Like, whenever I use a product for the first time and it doesn't have slip, I feel disrespected. <laughs> I feel like you don't have my best interests at heart. I just need, because I'm in my regimen, I detangle my hair before I shampoo it. Mm, okay. Because once I add water, like, my hair just mats up. So I always use a conditioner to detangle my hair um, before I shampoo. So if that conditioner doesn't have slip, my entire routine is ruined from the beginning. So I look for conditioners that have a creamy consistency, mm -hmm. um, not too thick, um, but, but that have slip. And what do you usually detangle with? Uh, you mean which product or which tool? Tool. Fingers. fingers. <laughs> okay. All right. And you, Jamie? I definitely agree. I like slip, but I'm very lucky because pretty much any product I use, I'll have good slip. I'm able to just run my fingers through it when it's wet, and a lot of times when it's dry. So I do feel very lucky in, in that way. Um, I also like it to be creamy, lightweight, a good smell. I'm really weird about smells. It needs to be just like a light, nice fragrance. One of my favorites is actually the Curls Coconut Sublime. Um, conditioner. It has such a good smell. To me, it smells like a confetti, uh, one of those confetti box cake. <laughs> and I know it's supposed to smell like, I guess, coconut, but I, I, I love that smell. And it's just a good consistency and makes my curls nice and defrizzes them. So that's important. So what do you detangle with and what's your tool of choice? My tool of choice would just be my fingers. That's really all I need, or just a comb. That's I have pretty, like I said, pretty easy slip with my hair, and it's easy. Like even right now, I can pretty easily run my fingers through. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 and do either of you cocktail with your products? We'll start with Evelyn. So, do you add oils to your conditioner, or do you feel like? your conditioner is not up to par if you have to add anything to it. If I have to, <laughs> if I have to scoop in a generous dollop of coconut oil into your conditioner, it wasn't a good conditioner. Okay. True. That's just my, that's just my <laughs> humble opinion. My humble opinion. <laughs> I was real humble. <laughs> Do you mix anything with your conditioner, Jamie? I don't. I'm pretty simple. I don't like piling on too many products, so I agree. If the conditioner doesn't work like it's supposed to, and you have to keep adding things to it, then it's probably not the best product choice. Okay. And in regards to performance, longevity, I'm sure both of you wash your hair um, at different frequencies. So do you determine how good a conditioner is based off how long you can go without rewashing your hair? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's strictly based off detangling. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, what, what, what do you mean when you say how long, how long I can go? So when I wash my hair and I rinse the conditioner off, uh, my hair needs to be really, really supple, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to go at least four days to a full week before I rewash it. What do you think, Nikki? A full week? Uh, <laughs> day five, my hair is dry. <laughs> and uh, I'm, not, I'm not making it a full week. <laughs> okay. And you? Um, let me think about that one. I mean, I feel like I... Okay, so I uh, condition my, <laughs> conditioned my hair twice. Okay. Um, and if you're watching this in the comments, tell us if you 
If we're here, we're no. Um, I detangle, I mean, I condition my hair twice. Once before I wash my hair. Okay. Then I wash my hair. Then I deep condition my oh, hair. Yeah, me okay. Too. So that deep conditioner is what has to be like all the so all cool. the it has to okay. be like the best conditioner Got you. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess we're blurring the lines between daily conditioner and deep conditioner. Yes. Ah, yes. okay. Okay, interesting. All right, so let's move on to moisturizers. We'll start with um, Nikki, knew about it to me. Uh, do you prefer Thick, thin, cream, liquid, do you apply it when it's wet, apply it when it's dry? Um, I do both. I apply okay. when it's wet and when it's dry. When it's wet is usually after I wash my hair. Mm -hmm. So I'm applying like a leave-in or a detangler, moisturizer. I consider all those to be the same thing. I don't need, you know, <laughs> nine different products. I don't need a leave-in, detangler, slash moisturizer. You can put it all in one product mm -hmm. and make that work for me, then that's perfectly fine. It's so like my favorite ones are like not today the um, Smoothing Assurance Lotion from Curl Junkie um, because I like their consistency. It's kind of creamy, but it's also like it provides a lot of slip and it's like, it's just amazing versus like those really runny ones where it's basically water. Like it's basically water and they put in a little bit of like sickle syrup alcohol in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, by the way. I like those super watery moisturizers. I do too. No. <laughs> No, oh. man, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do, like, a watery moisturizer, a spray leave-in moisturizer. Um, maybe, like, as a refresher on day, like, four, but no. My go-to moisturizers have to be, like, a little bit thicker than that. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's not going to, like, provide a lot of detangling and slip in my moisturizer, it's got to it's gotta be thicker than that. Okay. I've noticed I prefer cream, but maybe not because it's thicker. I've noticed that the density of the product or the viscosity doesn't really matter because I've used a moisturizer or leave-in that's really thick, and it cannot spread throughout my hair. <laughs> or, do you, you know? mean like thick like hairdo? Because hairdo is thicker than not today. Well, like, see, I like haven't used hairdo. You haven't used oh, this, You need to try it. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> So is I apply my moisturizer when my hair is wet, fresh out the shower, and um, it needs to have slip because I do wear wash and go. So I can't if I can't get my fingers through it, um, I'm re rinsing my hair all over again and using a different product. But I prefer thin creams with slip, but I can't do liquid because my hair thinks it's water. <laughs> What's that? Th wait, wait a minute. What is a thin, <laughs> a thin cream with a slip? Like, what's an example? Oh, perfect example. A milk. Oh, okay. I love a good milk, and I don't know if it's because my hair is fine and low porosity, but um, yeah, I know a lot of type fours love these thick butters that just you can mold them into like putty. I don't need. I don't need the clay. I don't need the clay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I don't need slash one to clay. <laughs> but you know that that doesn't really um, work too well for me. So yeah. All right, let's play a game. <laughs> Favorite moisturizer on the count of three. One. You see all three or us two? Oh, us three. Uh, and then we'll yeah, us. Us. No. Okay. <laughs> My favorite green. Just the product name. Just the product name. Okay, okay. Well, moisturize. Which the entire thing. The entire thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Shimmer. <laughs> okay, mine is Shea Moisture, Jamaican by Castor Oil. Oh, way to take it back. Praise oh. hand emoji. Praise hand emoji. I love that one. That's a good one. Oh, but my holy girl's not today. Oh, but that Shea Moisture. <laughs> okay, it's time for y'all to vote. Ready? One, two, three. Can you Alexander Alexander Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Okay, last time I said Alakay Moisture, so in my head I'm thinking Shea Moisture plus Alakay, <laughs> which in real life I do that. I pile moisturizers on top of each other, but the Moisture Rich Parfait is bomb, and then the Yucca... And plantain milk is bomb. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> and I agree with Nikki. Kinky Curly Knot today just has the best slip out of anything I've ever used. And I really like that it's multi-purpose, so I can use it in the shower. I can not rinse it all the way out. I can apply it after I get out of the shower. It basically does everything. I love the fact that all six of us have different hair types, whether it's curl pattern or prosody, and we kind of almost name the same yeah. favorite products. <laughs> so let's move on to Styler. Um, Jamie and Devery. Uh, what do you use? What are your favorite stylers? Are you okay. more of a pumpkin custard souffle, jelly, mousse, cream gel type of gal? <laughs> stylers are super important for my hair. Without a styler, it's a complete disaster. So I love to use cream gels and gels in my hair um, after the shower when it's towel dried. And if I'm going for a second or third day, a lot of times then I'll use a mousse. So that's basically what I need. But I need a lot of, of gel when I come out of the shower. And actually, one of my favorite things to do is put too much gel so that when it dries, when I air dry it, I almost take my hands and go like this to get some of it out. And it still leaves my hair pretty defined and how I like it. It doesn't flake when you do that? Unless I'm not aware. So if someone could tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. That's the same with me. Um, for me, I like to find, I look for the same ingredient and qualities in a styler, moisturizer, and leave in. So, I don't know. I just look for something that's light that is going to hold my curl. But it depends on what the hairstyle is, too. If it's an updo, I want something that's maybe medium hold, but still not hard because, nah, that's not a good look. <laughs> that's like relaxed. And I'll never relax. So. <laughs> <laughs> so then now I have a question for the three of you. Their is so snatched that they don't have it. This is what I'm trying to say. So but for me, for a wash and go, I like something light. So like a light gel or something. And I scrunch it. I use the, my microfiber towel that I've been using for years. I need to toss it down, probably get a new one. But that's how I apply it. And I, I also I like to do it on damp hair. So. Okay, so now I have a question in regards to selecting stylers. Do you look for um, specific details on packaging, like medium, light, stronghold, or are you looking more for terms like custard, pudding, cream gel? Uh, what do you what do you look for when you're um, either in Curl Mart <laughs> or you're walking and strolling the aisles at Target? What catches your attention? For me, it would be the medium hold. I, okay. sometimes, I sometimes will try a light hold, but to be honest, by day two, my curls have just become a frizzy mess. Um, I, I don't know. What do you like? Um, like I said, I, I like light to medium because I don't like crunchiness. Mm -hmm. I don't like hair to look like it's crunchy, like if the wind is blowing. Like I want to be like, yes, hair is blowing. <laughs> I don't want it to be like, it's stuck, and that's it. And this is what you're getting, my hat, which is my hair. It's not it. <laughs> yeah, and I would say puddings and things that are too thick are just, it's way too much for my 3B curls. It would really um, make them look weird and not so springy. As far as consistency goes, I like thicker, you know, products because of my porosity. So anything that's light basically just feels like it's, coating my hair and it's not really penetrating. And for a styler, like I said, I look for the same things that I would need in a moisturizer. So like a styling butter, um, a styling milk, things like that. And you, Christina? I actually need a little bit of hold. I can't use a light gel because it won't, like if I don't do the right things to my hair, it'll just be kind of straight. So I need a little bit more hold to actually create the curls and to hold them. So something um, medium to strong. Like for example, with the Diva Curl, their light hold gel isn't enough for me. This is really interesting. I'm learning more about my coworkers every day because <laughs> I would assume that people with looser textures would yeah. prefer light hold products, but that is not the case. 
Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> we learned that we both have the same product that we love, um, <laughs> the Brio Geo Curl Charisma, the leave-in. The leave yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, and we both have different porosity, yeah. different yeah. textures, and it's our go-to. Yeah. Awesome. I use Starlet for like my wash and goes. I also mm -hmm. use it as a leave-in. Um, whenever I'm fresh out of the shower and my hair is soaking wet, I like to put it on and it is good. <laughs> it is good. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, and I'm just kind of lazy to be honest. So the fact that this product is like a two in one, the moisturizer yeah. and styler, is good. I, I don't like spending more than five to ten minutes on my hair. And its ingredients are great. Another thing with stylers, some people will think that, okay, this is my time that I can play with the ingredients. But since being a naturally curly, I'm super, like, I look at the ingredients. Um, I don't, that doesn't always make or break if I'm going to use the product, but I do like to, to look at the ingredients. So just because it's a styler, I still want to make sure that I'm aware of what's going on my hair or in my hair. Okay. All right, Naturally Curly World, do not forget to send in your questions. We will be addressing them at the end of the Hangout. And uh, we will continue going. So the next thing we're going to talk about are the things we're very particular about. What are the Naturally Curly editors bougie about? <laughs> I'm not bougie. Well, that's not, what, that's not what the editor's choice hangout. I just <laughs> teaser. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start with fragrance. And <laughs> we're going to address the question to Christina and Nikki. What do you prefer? See, Christina's already excited. Um, <laughs> what do you prefer for your pro your products to smell like? I am uh, I'm partial to a product that has a bit of a more masculine smell. Um, so I love the way the Redken curvaceous smells. It's kind of like a really sexy cologne, um, and I don't like. There's, I've encountered a few products lately that have this, like, I don't know if it's, like, citrus or tropical smell that ends up smelling, to me, like a public restroom like, air freshener. Offensive <laughs> <laughs> to my nose, and no matter how moisturizing it is, I, I won't put that on my hair. I also like it when I, you know, enjoy the smell of a fragrance, for my hair products in the shower, but when I get out, I don't want it to linger. Mm. I don't want it to interfere with anything else that I'm wearing, so I am particular about fragrance. All right, Nikki. If I could smell <laughs> like... <laughs> this is for real. For real. Naturally curly world. If I could smell like the Shea Moisture <laughs> Manuka Mo for a line all day, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I, I like to wear their their oil like a perfume. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells so good. They need to go ahead and make a fragrance. I will just spritz it on. I love for that to like linger in my hair. Evelyn was wearing a lotion the other day and almost fell out of my chair. It smells so good. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't my body? It wasn't you, though. <laughs> and if it's not that, like if it doesn't smell like the most amazing perfume ever, then I like for my my smells, my fragrances to be very clean. Mm. Like if it smells like, I don't, just clean, 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 clean like linen, clean like linen, but not like um, washing powder or detergent. <laughs> okay. Like I don't want it to smell like it just smells like minty peppermint. Um, fresh and clean, but not like not too floral, and not like you know dryer sheets. Dryer yeah. sheets. Okay. All right, so Amanda, um, I know you feel strongly about this. <laughs> if you're watching, tell us if you feel strongly about this too. Do you like or don't like products that smell like food? 
feel about this. Okay, so I don't really like anything that's artificial. So let's say I'm eating banana bread. I can tell if it's artificial banana. Just a few drops of concentration and it's just gross. I don't know why anyone wants to smell like cream Skittles. Cream um, Skittles. Slushes at Sonic. <laughs> it's just not something that I'm into. I don't want to try these. I just want to smell clean and fresh like Mm. I agree. It's kind of like those yogurt flavors that are like key lime pie yogurt, and mm. it's just not like that's not natural, and that's <laughs> not my favorite products to smell either. I don't mind that actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the floral; that bothers me. But a nice sugary cupcake smell, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because then when you work out, you smell like sweat and sweat and cupcakes. Confectionery. Oyen, burnt sugar, pomade, I know immediately. I know. Like, that yeah. smells good. Oh, wait, no, no, wait. The burnt sugar pomade, though, Christina, is pretty boss. And I know I said, <laughs> oh, no foods, but that burnt sugar pomade, I will put that on my ends and just split it. <laughs> I remember I saw Nikki at church, and I was, like, praising, and then all of a sudden I was like, girl, do you have that burnt sugar in your hair? And I was like, yes. And I hugged her, and I hugged her so long, because I was just like, oh, my God, it smells so good. And I was like, this is not the right place for that. <laughs> I remember in college, one time I walked into um, the classroom, and someone was like, someone smells like pancakes, and I was like, well, <laughs> oil and burnt sugar pomade. It's pretty great. It is pretty awesome. That's the exception. That's the exception. But yeah, exactly. in general, keep your key lime sorbet, <laughs> uh, cheesecake flavored cupcake. To leave that to your lotion. Your buttercream <laughs> has to smell like buttercream. It's, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Your custard no. has to smell, smell like custard. custard. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't want it to smell like eggs. No. <laughs> no. Or just fragrance free, right? There are a lot of naturals who are sensitive to fragrances and whatever fragrance means. Um, or even children that just have really sensitive skin. So fragrance free is always a great option. For the Shea Moisture children's lines. They're like baby, head-to-toe, shampoo, and body wash. That's fragrance-free, and I feel really comfortable using it um, knowing that there's nothing extra. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should mention this is not sponsored by Shea Moisture at all. <laughs> this is not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> we just love them. So next, we're going to go to packaging. Packaging. It wasn't until I worked here until I realized how important packaging is to Amanda and how important <laughs> packaging is just <laughs> to people with textured hair in general. So let's start off with Devry. What do you look for in packaging? Um, do you care about the ounces? I'm sure you do in, in regards to the prices. Do you Every prefer to a jar? Do you want to pump a squeeze? What do you look for? Well, whenever, on my wash day, like, don't come in the bathroom because it's about to look really crazy. Like, I would prefer everything to have a package that's similar to Briogeo's leave-in, how it's just easy to squeeze. Um, it's just something I can stand up in the shower, I can take it out, put it on the counter, and just pop the top open and squeeze it out. I don't really care for the big jars. I have to screw. I have to go look for the jar. Where did I place it? Um, I end up putting, I love Shea Moisture, but I end up putting the wrong lids on the wrong thing, and then I grab it, and then I'm like, oh, that's the wrong product. Um, and I also don't like pumps because I, my, no? wrist, my wrist and my joints are, you know, it's hard. So for me to have to pump something out, I just take the top off and I squeeze it out, and that's what I end up doing. So. For me, pumps are kind of like a no-no. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> and what do you prefer, Jamie? Did you say Jamie? <laughs> what, what do you prefer in regards to your packaging? 
Didn't know who you were. Um, jars, bottles, pumps, squeeze. Yeah. Usually, if it's in a jar, it's too heavy for me anyway. Um, I actually I would agree with Debbie. I like when it's just easy to pump and it comes out of the, the bottle easier. For some reason, when. Um, what, what were you just saying when you. Oh, a pump. When you have to do a pump, it's <laughs> open. I don't know if, like, I, I'm. Four-year-olds can probably open them, but literally, I'm like, can never get them open, and I have to just unscrew it. So those bother me. And then also, just like <laughs> the weird shapes, like you were saying, that don't stand up right, or you yeah. have to like turn them the other way in the shower. Yeah. Those drive me crazy. Yeah, I don't know why some brands just can't figure out their packaging. Yeah, that's the only thing. Like I said, I love Shea Moisture, but that's another thing. Like with their conditioners. Like I said, I just take the top off. Like I'm not gonna sit here and pump 20 pumps because guys, <laughs> like we don't do that. So I'm not gonna sit here and squeeze the whole condition like through a pump. I'm just, yeah. I don't have time for that. My fingers gonna get wrinkly. Like I just don't have time. But I do love something that's easy to squeeze, and you know it's kind of cool. I don't know if brands still do this with. They make it to where the packaging, when you sit it up, like in the shower, it's upside down. Like the, yeah, the it's word. Called, it's called it's a rocky bottle. bottle. I, like that. I like that a lot. So. Or the worst is when there's like a little bit of product at the bottom of like a spray pump or whatever, and you can't get it. And you're like, that little bit could have been like $5 worth of product. And I can't get that. Or like a spray leave in. I, what? No, a spray leave-in on my hair? That's not going to work. Like, that's just not going to work. <laughs> I need, I like thicker products, especially like with leave-ins, I like thicker products. So to spray that onto my hair, I'm about to get in the shower. Like, I'm preparing myself for a disaster. So, no. Okay, so now I'm curious. If brands were to change their packaging to your preference and the prices went up, would you would you purchase the product? <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends. I mean, it just depends on the product. But something that I really like, um, right now I'm really liking the droppers that oil blends are having. Like oh, yeah. um, Shane Moisture has one for their super fruit line and then there's another oil I've been using um, from it's called Somalux. And it has like a dropper that I could just place directly to my scalp. So I don't have to worry about pouring it out and mixing it up in my hands and it being all messy. It just gets straight to the scalp and I, get, I do my thing. And then another thing is um, allocate. They have like for the shampoo, they also have like a nozzle tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super convenient. So. The first time I saw that, I thought this is really weird. But then once <laughs> I started using it, like, I wish all shampoos came like that because you can really get it right to the scalp. Yeah, same. I really like it. One thing that nobody's mentioned are sometimes colors on products. Just because of a color looks weird, I don't want to try it. Like, the outside, like, maybe it's just the paper or, like, the packaging color is funky. I, to me, that's already, like, a, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't stand ugly packaging. Like, if it looks like it was made in PowerPoint and it's got like all these designs and 17 different fonts, like I'm not buying this. I can't read what it's about. Colors everywhere, designs, like overlays. I don't I don't want to try it. What's wrong with Times New Roman? I don't <laughs> <laughs> Comic Sans. Like I don't put Comic Sans on your packaging. I'm not buying that. Yeah, as far as like the names and stuff, you don't like we're not where the majority of us are not elementary school, you know, class, like people. So at the end of the day, like we don't need like bubblicious, enticing flavor. <laughs> like we don't need all that. Like just get straight to the point. <laughs> Especially if you have multiples in your line. Like if you have a lot of conditioners or a lot of stylers, like get straight to the point. And then on the back, I would suggest actually in the directions instead of being like vague, tell us what this can really. Be. Can, can it really work on all hair types? Can it work on straight to coily? If that's the case, that didn't just buy me. That just turned me away. So. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just pull the see you at the dough, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
I was going to say that y'all were talking about um, not liking punks, and I feel you, but have has a bottle ever flown out of your hands in the shower? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can't have a, a bottle, especially of conditioner, that's really thick, and I'm just doing this and it flies. That's a health hazard. It is. You can knock your eyes out. You can, yeah. You can. And it's just, if I could just get a pump for it, you know, even though sometimes it's not as sanitary, like it's just a jar, you can scoop it out. Yeah. I can deal with that. You want to know the ultimate packaging? A jar with a pump on it. We can just end the hang out now. Yeah. It has a little jar with a with a pump. Go, Jane Carter. Smart. That was smart. Do it. That was smart. Let me pump in the shower. Give me the option to scoop. <laughs> no, 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 no. The gravity bottle by Aussie Moist, I don't know if they had that patent or what the case is, but that bottle is supreme. Oh, it doesn't even have a top, just pick it up. Oh. So that's, what? It's a three minute miracle? Oh, oh so that's what that is. That's yeah. exactly what that is. Oh. Okay. Amazing. Oh, I need mm -hmm. to try that. I love me some Aussie Moist. I'm going to try a three minute miracle now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's that my high school holy grail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Oh, I said that was my high school holy grail. Oh. The three minute miracle? Oh. Yeah. My high school holy grails wouldn't stand a chance now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but another thing about packaging, apart from like the actual packaging, is the amount of product. Yeah. I dream, like I have big dreams, and I dream of an industry where we can all agree that I only need this much shampoo, but this Please. much conditioner. Please. And, like, I don't understand why we still have. I saw a four ounce conditioner the other day. What? That's one wash. <laughs> That's one section. That's one section of hair. So, if you are. Uh, you what? I said it's good for traveling. But that's not a travel size. Actually, actually travel size. I'm not going to travel size. <laughs> so, I'm going to need, like,. It, it shows me that you care and that you actually, especially if your product is targeted toward people with textured Texture hair of any kind. If you have a small bottle of shampoo and a slightly larger bottle of conditioner, I know that you put some thought into our routine because I need maybe two pumps of shampoo, maybe. But conditioner, it's like two pumps per section. So, hmm. yeah. But then, would you expect for the shampoo to be priced Lower because usually they're at the same price point. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind price differences. So the twenty-five dollar deep conditioner and the two ninety-nine shampoo. You know if that's okay. what it takes. <laughs> if that's what it takes. I'm good. Okay. The brands who get it are the ones who have gallon size anything. Who? Like this. When they have like a gallon size product, I'm like, yes, y'all get it. <laughs> <laughs> they get it. Like. <laughs> Well, Christina, how much does a wavy use? How I, long do you, does it take you to get through the bottle? Oh, I rarely get to the bottom of a bottle. Maybe that's just a product junkie thing more than a wavy thing, but I almost <laughs> never finish products. <laughs> so do you feel like you use about the same amount of shampoo and conditioner? Oh, no. I use a tiny amount of shampoo. I'm only putting shampoo to my scalp and nothing else, so... Yeah, I agree with everyone else. Way more conditioner, very little amount of shampoo. Okay. I think everyone's like main packaging complaint that I hear from the community is like the leave-in and the moisturizer. Oh yeah. Because I'm always running out of leave-in. And I was at Evelyn's house the other day and she had a full tub of the JBCL leave-in and mine is like, mine is maybe a fourth of a cup before the end of it. I mean, I'm hitting the plastic at this point. I'm scraping the sides. I still have a lot left. But you have a higher density. Slide, you can slide it, it this way if you want to. No, no. no. I'll be I have here. way less hair than you do. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't use as much either. So now we're going to move on to ingredients. Are you ingredient conscious? I will start. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am not a fan of silicones, primarily because 
I feel like my hair ends up being dry the second I rinse it out, the conditioner, or within two to three days. On top of that, I get horrible back acne. Yep, I learned that from my roommate in college. She could not use products with silicones because it broke her out. And so I thought to myself, hmm, let me stop using them. And my back acne disappeared. So I'm not a fan of products with silicones, not even the water-soluble. So are y'all ingredients conscious? Let's start with Jamie. I'm really not. I noticed that a lot of my favorite products have really good ingredients, but honestly, if it works, it works, and I'm fine with it. So, yeah, you're, Amanda's funny, though. She, she really is. <laughs> I, I think I'm very opposite. <laughs> I'll try anything. <laughs> Debra? Um, yeah, I would say that I am. And yeah, when I met you, it got worse. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, when I was transitioning, I actually relied on silicones because it helped kind of smooth uh, and make you know the two different hair uh, types blend. But now that I'm completely natural and it's been a couple of years, I don't really care for silicones either. Um, and I always look at the first five ingredients. And you taught me that, Amanda. So yeah. <laughs> um. So I, if it's a new product that I've never heard of before, then yeah, I'm gonna definitely take a look at the ingredients list. But if it's something that everyone in the community loves, if I hear about it all the time, I have read great reviews of it, then I'm probably gonna buy it anyway and try it out. Um, for example, Aussie Moist. I, I've used it, I like it, everyone else likes it, but those aren't your best ingredients. Okay. Nikki? I'd like to think that I'm like ingredient bougie because I always read, I always read the ingredient list. But there are products where I'm just like, I know it got silicones in it, but I'm just going to do it anyways. For example, <laughs> Aussie Moist has silicones, but the slip and that conditioner and at the price point it's at, I'll do it. Um, but also, Davin's, Davin's, Davin's? Who knows? Davin's. Love conditioner. Oh, yeah. Oh, slay. Like, yeah, that's what? an exception. That's an exception. I'll take it. But for yeah. the most part, most of my products that I use on a daily basis that are holy grails have really good ingredients in them. Oh, me? Um, I like to, I pretend, like, I feel pressure. <laughs> I feel peer pressure to care about ingredients. For my peers and, you know, my coworkers. Um, but the truth of the matter is, I don't, I know I'm a type 4 who doesn't care about ingredients. I mean, I like, I think I like the idea of using a natural product, mm -hmm. just, you know, off principle just to see if a product brand will actually do it more than I care about ingredients from a performance or health point of view. I like using natural products kind of like to see if they actually work. Because for a long for the longest time when I was going natural, I was convinced that a natural product couldn't have as much slit mm -hmm. as like a commercial product with silicone. I've been proven wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Marshmallow Root. Shout out to Slippery <laughs> Elm. Yeah. <laughs> I've been proven wrong, but um, yeah, I usually don't care about ingredients. But I, I like to dibble and dabble in healthy ingredients. I don't know. I just find that when I use um, conditioners with silicone, like the experience in the shower is amazing. And then once I rinse it out or the next day, it's insanely dry. Like my hair is suffocated. So. That experience I had in the shower was more of a, I don't know, limited. I just, I didn't, I just like a, like a bad boyfriend, you know. It's like a bad boyfriend. <laughs> I don't know, it's this coating on your hair that just, it just, it's not real. I want real nourishment suppleness. And I, yeah, you know, the arm. nourishment. <laughs> and I feel like you can't, it's hard to get that with silicones. And plus, I'm not doing back acne, so <laughs> that's just, that's just a personal experience. It's, not gonna happen. Um, I'm also not a fan of mineral oil. Mm. Ooh, if, mm -mm. Yeah, like why do people still put still mineral do oil in? Why are y'all why are y'all still putting mineral oil in things? We can't do it. Like I can't do the mineral oil. No. Well, I heard. Oh no. <laughs> and Christina 
and Devery, because y'all are on content, you can tell me if I'm wrong. But I heard that. <laughs> well, min- I mean, okay, but I heard that mineral oil isn't really all that bad. It's when you put it on your scalp that it's bad. But putting it on your hair, your hair's not alive, so. Correct. But it's going to get to your scalp. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, or. <laughs> Okay. Well, you ha- did you ask a question or not? <laughs> like, is mineral oil like why? Where did that come from? Who said that mineral oil was bad? I mean, it's known to clog your pores, so it's it's kind of I think that's more of a cultural thing. Like, well, it can be. You know, people who relax their hair, we used to get our scalps greased and get our edges greased before they apply the relaxer, and we always thought that it, that was a good thing because it did clog the pores, so it prevented the chemical from entering our scalp, you know, from getting scalp burn. But as naturals, we some of us have some of us, you know, whether we know it or not, have kind of taken that practice into this world and it's a completely different world. I mean the whole point it, it's not natural. It's not safe. It's preventing hair growth. So it's not good. And with a lot of us are, you know, goals equals waist strap length, you know, like, I'm, I'm still waiting on that day. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get, you know, I'm not going to use mineral oil. So Same thing with silicones. It clogs your pores. So. Isn't that well that? <laughs> but to piggyback off of uh, Evelyn's shout-outs, shout-out to ACV, shout-out to Willow Bark Extract for being natural. Oh, hashtag. <laughs> hashtag clarify. Uh, yes. <laughs> Shout out to all of that. And Amanda, you know what? You have type 4 hair. I have 3C, but I still love me some butter. Okay? Like, my hair drinks up butter. Like, that's good. <laughs> so it depends. But at the same time, you have, uh, what, finer hair? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, do y'all really look for, like, proteins in your products? Can you tell when your hair has been revitalized with proteins? Can you tell the difference between, if, other than, like, using, like, a treatment? Um, I personally can't tell. What has helped me more than protein treatments is the lock method. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a time, my hair used to be blue, so when I was going from... From what was I before then? When I was going from like reddish brown to blue, I had bleached my hair like maybe four times, and my hair was like, why would you do that? <laughs> so my hair is very weak, very brittle, and I tried protein treatments and I didn't really feel like they worked. The only thing that really worked on my hair was liquid oil cream, and that's really what kept the moisture in my hair. So I don't really look for proteins. And I had, I have been doing similar things to Evelyn to my hair, so I bleached it, I did purple, and uh, that is, that is very, very damaging. My hair was sort of, like in the shower, it felt almost squishy and slimy, which meant it was all the way damaged. Um, And then when it was dry and out of the shower, it felt like straw. And it, there was a lot of breakage. So I did, and I still do use protein treatments. And for me, they've made all the difference in the world. Um, so I have been a big proponent of Apogee protein products. I use their moisture leave-in, their textured wash, their deep conditioner. I use all of it. And without it, my hair starts to feel very straw-like. Interesting. All right, well, now we're going to address the community questions. And the first question that we have is, I've been able to find my holy grails through trial and error. What do I do with all of my product fails? Give away. Give them away. Give them away. Give them to your friend because just like the thing out is, what might not work for you might work for your friend who has natural hair or who has relaxed hair. Give them away. Don't keep them in your closet. If they expire, mm-hmm. you're just going to yeah. like waste the product. So just give them away. I agree. I give them away um, to friends and family. And if 
if that pains you that you're giving away <laughs> these bottles that you paid good money for, then try trading. I'm sure that your friends have products that they bought that they don't like either. And I know oh. there are a lot of product swaps. So mm -hmm. if you go to one in your area, um, look it up and see. You know, a lot of times you can put a product on the table and then grab one in return. So that's also cool. Also, um, don't be afraid to cocktail, right? So I've learned that some conditioners that I use that either don't have enough slip or I don't uh, I don't think they're performing well in my hair, I'll use them to pre-poo or I'll use them to achieve like a twist out. So, yeah, that helps. Yeah, girl, try it. Mm -hmm. I also use my shampoos that I don't like. I use them as makeup brush cleaners because mm -hmm. I don't want to buy a makeup brush cleaner. Innovative. And That's it's smart. great. Like, their hairs, just clean it. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it. That's just a good content piece. Yeah, that's a good I like idea. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's our second question. Can you give us some places, stores online, to look for best products to use by hair type? Curlmart.com. <laughs> 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 um, a lot of articles that are specifically about this. So, for example, we'll have articles that are curl definers for 3C hair. We try our best to really drill down on that. So, naturallycurly.com. <laughs> yeah. And also, um, if you visit our hair type page, um, whether you're looking at curl pattern or porosity, um, there are product suggestions on the right hand side of the page, so don't um, don't forget to visit there. Our third question: Do any of you ladies do any DIY mixing for any part of your regimen? Um, I do not, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> Natural eighty five. <laughs> Hi, shout out to Natural eighty five. Um, I love trying to do DIYs. Um, I used to do, before I colored my hair, I wouldn't do this now, but before I colored my hair, I used to do apple cider vinegar rinses, mm -hmm. um, I used to do bentonite clay treatments, which were always awesome. Um, that's just when you mix bentonite clay, you can mix it with water, aloe vera juice, or apple cider vinegar. Mix it up, make a paste, and put it on your detangled <laughs> hair, <laughs> and um, it really cleanses your scalp, cleanses your hair and it makes your coils pop. Um, I do, you know, little oil mixes uh, if I want to do the lock method or seal my hair yeah. or do a pre-poo treatment. Um, I just mix my favorite oils like coconut oil, jojoba oil, some mm -hmm. olive oil. Um, that's pretty much it. I haven't d delved into the realm of DIY conditioners just because Getting avocado and banana out of your hair, no, just <laughs> like a nightmare. But we have plenty of articles um, on nationallycurly.com showing you, and some of them are videos, some of them are written out recipes showing you how to do all those recipes. So if you do want to use an avocado and banana uh, concoction, what you want to do is blend it and then use a rice strainer to remove the chunks and. Voila, that's how you achieve it. Yeah. And I forgot in college I did use honey from the cafeteria to upgrade my deep conditioner. So Oh that's smart. Mm -hmm. that's very smart. Know, I to down to the the dining hall and filled them up. <laughs> and uh, and oh, sorry. if you don't want to blend your fruits and vegetables, you can also use baby food. Mm. Oh smart. That's smart. Wash out. I was um, um, oh girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we still in the DIY thing? I recently, um, well, I only really do DIY when I'm doing an ACB rinse, um, and I don't want to use a shampoo. And I, you know, you have to just do it sparingly. So I do it maybe once a month, um, and to really get rid of like buildup. Or if I just went swimming or something, I don't swim, but still, if I went to the pool and was cute and it got my hair wet. Then you know you gotta go back and like clarify and get all that chlorine and all those chemicals out. And then also I like to do DIY lightning treatments. Um, I'm really big on that. So yeah. And it's amazing like the results that Debra gets from using cinnamon to lighten her hair. Yeah. Like it looks like it's been bleached, but it hasn't. It's mind blowing. 
it's you have to do a lot of research because a lot of natural ingredients, although they're natural, of course, when you know blended together, put mixed together, they cause chemical reactions. That's why your hair changes color. So I have trying. I've been trying to perfect this for a couple years now, and uh, I think I'm getting getting it kind of. But yeah. Cayenne pepper, lemon, honey, they all do different things, but they cinnamon, and they're all um, great for coloring your hair. And it depends on your porosity, too. So. But like I said, just do research before you just try to go be a Martha Stewart because, you know, <laughs> because it's not, you just have to know what works for your hair and, and what's going to, how, you know, the ingredients will react. So would you suggest doing, like, a strand test? Yeah, but you know what? I <laughs> don't do strand tests. I do section tests. And then, it, you know, if it doesn't turn out the way I like it, then I'll go get it professionally dyed or something. But luckily for me, well, for me, I don't know. I just like to kind of just go with the flow. So, yeah. We just recently filmed a DIY video with Lisa Price last week. So be on the lookout for that if you're looking for some um, recipes to uh, fix up, whip up in your kitchen or bathroom. I don't know where you do all of your mixing. Um, our fourth question, what products would you recommend to protect your hair from the sun during the summer? Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? UV. What products do you recommend for UV protection? Um, it depends. Like, you know, I know in the drugstores there are a lot of products that offer natural UV filters. Um, for me, they cater more towards wavy hair, which I don't think is fair because, you know, yeah, but they do. And so, like I said, those are like at Target or Sally's. Um, there's a lot of, you know, they, they contain UVA, UVB filters, so that's important. And also, um, yeah, I can tell you what doesn't work. <laughs> Lemon. Lemon will totally mess up your, you know, well, for me, it messed up my hair. I, I did lemon last, last summer um, for natural highlights, and the sun kind of sees lemon on someone's hair, and it totally, like, fades in that, and that's not, that's not good, you know, so now I'm dealing with breakage because of it, but, yeah. My biggest tip for sun protection is to just cover up your hair. Um... I think that we're all pretty careful or try to be about our skin, but hair is very susceptible to the elements. So I try to either wear a hat or a scarf or something just to protect it if I know that I'm going to be out in the sun for like a whole day or for a festival or at the beach. Um, and I'd like to, you know, soak my hair in like maybe a little extra leave-in conditioner for those sorts of outings. Yeah. Also, extra virgin olive oil is really good, um, and honey is good. But like I said, it depends on your porosities. For some people, that might be too heavy. But for me, that also works because it's a kind of an, a good natural humectant. So it also, if it's frizzy outside, it kind of like blocks the humidity in the air um, from happening to your hair. So yeah. All right, and our last question. Um, I don't swim that often, but do you have any advice for, for protecting your natural hair from the chemicals in the water? Well, I do. <laughs> when I am being summertime fine and I'm trying to protect my hair before I go swimming, whether I'm going in a lake or a swimming pool, I actually try to wash my hair the morning before and I allow the conditioner to completely dry my hair. So I might put my hair in a twist or put it in a puff. And yeah, so that it's completely saturated in conditioner and dry before I go swimming versus like putting conditioner on it and it's wet and then going swimming because it's not fully absorbed. And my hair, since I've done that, my hair has been responding really well to it. It's not dry whatsoever. It always has that really slippery coating. What do you do, Nikki? I actually have a video of... <laughs> on our other channel <laughs> um, about swimming with natural hair and I heard that you should soak your hair like wet your hair mm -hmm. so it's wet with water and then add like a leave-in or an oil um, and let 
And when you get in the water, um, your hair should already be wet so yeah. that your hair is not taking on chlorine in the chlorine water. It mm -hmm. already has water and um, products penetrating the hair shaft. So that is also accurate. So <laughs> the hair is already swelling with water, then it can only take so much. But yeah, those are my tips. And um, it's already 12, you guys. Well, 12 Central Standard Time. That is the end of our Hangouts. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you have more questions, just continue to put them in the comment section. Um, we will try to address them as the, the best that we can. Uh, we might format them and put them in articles. You never know. We'll try to tag you. But <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you. I'm going to steal Evelyn's phrase. We'll see you on the Internet somewhere. Bye. Bye. <laughs>